ever wondered how long it takes to design and build a proper microphone? Well, it's more than a week, that's for sure. And it won't be done this week either. But at least I'm figuring out most of the major issues, so I'm on the right track. Last time, I started up my first prototype. It was working, but it wasn't the best. Let's see why and where I went wrong. Currently, the main problem is the excessive background noise. It sounds like this. Hello? To figure out exactly where all this noise is coming from, I will add components one by one until I find all the noise sources. So let's start with the amplifier by itself. Not a lot. This would indicate that the amplifier and supply are doing well. Just to make sure, let's connect this capacitor to ground. Now it's not so good, but why? Is it from the capacitor? No, capacitors do not generate noise in general. Actually, the problem is from the supply. But why didn't we hear it without the capacitor? Well, before, the same noise was coming in on both amplifier inputs. And the amplifier has a really good common mode rejection ratio of 118 decibels, so you'd not hear the noise. It's cancelled out. When the capacitor is added, one of the inputs has all the noise filtered out, so only the other input is seeing the supply noise. Therefore, it is amplified and you can hear it. Let's just make sure that this is true. Maybe I have no idea what I'm talking about. Never trust internet people. So, to test my theory, I will add a bit of filtering on the supply to reduce the noise. Does it help? Let's just short circuit the resistor to see if there is any difference. Well, it's an improvement. But why was the supply so noisy? I used a linear power supply. These are known for being silent, right? Well, I did the math with the current gain configuration, and if I get more than one microvolt of noise at the input of the op amp, it will be registered by the ADC. So a perfectly clean signal at the input of the op amp needs to have below one microvolt of noise. Usually, switching regulators have an output noise around 1 to 100 millivolts. Way too much for this application. Linear regulators, on the other hand, have somewhere around 10 microvolts per output volt. So for 5 volts, that's about 50 microvolts of noise. So to get below 1 microvolt will be tough. Usually, the noise in a linear regulator comes from the voltage reference and the error amplifier. These need to be removed. So my stabilization network will only have the most basic components. Resistors, capacitors, and a couple of transistors. This should keep all the noise at an acceptable level. It seems that I made some mistakes in my first attempt that cannot be fixed by assembling different components. I will need a new board. But before I start reworking, there is one more thing I found and I need to see if it applies. Whenever I looked on various schematics on the internet, they always used electrolytic capacitors between the microphone and the amplifier. I thought that was because no high capacity ceramics were available. But as it turns out, I was wrong. There's a very good reason not to use ceramics in the audio path. The piezo effect. This is a phenomenon in which electricity can be directly turned into a mechanical vibration like in a piezo tweeter speaker. Or the other way around, mechanical vibration can be turned into an electrical signal, like in an electret or condenser microphone. And the effect will appear in ceramic capacitors. I have my previous circuit here. We have the background noise, but no sound, unless we get some vibrations. There you have it, ceramics are bad. Got to replace that also. I will instead use tantalum capacitors, because of their low profile. I want to make a small circuit. So this is the new schematic I came up with, complete with new supply network and tantalum capacitors. Got to see if it's actually better. Whenever building something, it's always good to buy more components than you actually need. One component you will break, one you will lose, and one you will actually use. But in my case, I didn't lose or break anything. I just need to build a second device, and that means I need to recycle everything from the first PCB. This can be a problem if your components are sensitive or small. 
Because of this, I will not be able to easily compare devices, old versus new, only based on some previous recordings. Oh well. Aha! It's done! Got to see if it actually works. Can you hear me? Well, there's still a bit of noise. I looked long and hard for the source, but turns out it's now coming from the amplifier, the resistors, and the microphone itself. Not a lot that can be done, but one of the things I can do is reduce the gain of the amplifier. The sound I'm recording is very loud, more than I need. So I will just modify this resistor and reduce the gain by half, so minus 6 decibels. This should also reduce the noise by half. Also, I will make this resistor bigger. This will get more signal in from the microphone, but also a bit more noise. From simulation, I get about 5.5 decibels of gain from increasing this resistor. So I lose in total 0.5 decibels of usable sound. But from calculations, because I reduced the gain and made the input resistor only slightly bigger, I got minus 3 decibels of noise. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a step in the good direction. I could get even less noise if I reduce the gain of the amplifier further. But then the sound would be too weak. The solution to this is to use a more sensitive microphone. Maybe some other time. For now, I'm stuck with this one. I previously borrowed a commercial microphone from a friend. No idea what he's doing with all these straps. There are quite a lot of them. I better not ask. But all things aside, this is a 70 euro microphone. Not premium quality, but also not dirt cheap either. This is what I will use as a reference to compare my microphone. And of course, the objective is to make a better one. So I can tell my friend what a crappy device he has, of course. So let's see what the commercial application is capable of. This is what a commercial microphone sounds like. What do you guys think? As you can see, the noise gets to about minus 35 decibels. And when voice recording is done, I get to minus 12. So the useful recording interval when speaking at a moderate voice is 23 decibels. On my microphone, on the other hand, the noise sits around minus 42 decibels. And with the voice, I get to minus 10 decibels. So 32 decibels of useful recording interval, 9 decibels more, or in other words, almost 3 times better than the commercial device. I call that pretty good. So what's left to do? Well, my microphone is working well, but it's still a pile of PCBs and wires. It needs to be put into a proper box, and the ADC part needs to be explained. But not this week. Hope you got some useful information out of this, leave your thoughts in the comments, and see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you.